Inventors in this workshop have spent years working on a fully mobile humanoid. Well, in 1985, Richard Greenhill got the idea of building a domestic robot, which was an idea that people have had the idea in the past, but essentially nobody really started trying to do it. And Richard thought he wanted to build a general-purpose humanoid robot that would be able to do most of the tasks that we take for granted. We've now got an arm that has all the degrees of freedom and movement of the human arm. The, the hand has the, the full flexibility. It can perform any of these movements, and the arm can do any of these sort of movements through a full range of, uh, of movements. And the idea there is that once we have the full set of movements, we can then look at using that for a variety of applications. The classical application, if you like, is uh, remote handling where at present you would send a person to do a job in a distant location. And the idea with this is that the person would simply put a pair of gloves on and a headset on and then do the job in the remote location by having the machine there to do the work for him. But Rich Walker has another, more basic reason for creating robots. I'm a very, very lazy person. I believe that people shouldn't have to work. So I spend 40 or 50 or 60 hours a week working on trying to remove the need for human beings to do work. Now by this, I don't mean creative work, I don't mean interesting work. I think that the human has the absolute right to go and do what they want to do, when they want to do it, as long as that doesn't interfere with anyone else's rights. But I don't see that humans should have to spend 40 or 50 hours a week essentially slaving away doing repetitive mundane tasks that machines could easily do. But could giving work to robots mean taking jobs from people? Technology has always put people out of work. It's part of the inevitable process, but it also creates new jobs. The idea that in some sense I see this kind of technology as providing is not so much removing people from work, but removing the concept of work from the human vocabulary. If we can shift the way that production happens, if we can shift the way that resources are distributed, and if, more to the point, we can remove humans from a lot of the, the mechanical construction loops, then we can maintain the same standard of living we have at present without the need to do work to do it. The same standard of living without the work? OK, you got yourself a deal. Ow, but that hurts. Crunch. Well, the bosses say we've got to take a break now, but stick around because we've got loads more to come. Oh, yes, we certainly have, including the story of what happened when this couple met in the real world after falling in love in cyberspace. We'll also be finding out what it's like to play computer games for a living as well as taking a look at the latest spy submarine. Stay here because we will still be here. Uh -huh.